So first of all, thank you very much for the invitation to present here some of our work. Uh, I want to respond on the rector's comments. So the next time I will cycle from Graz to Maribor in order to keep uh, my weight uh, in, in, the right, in the right level. And, uh, but now, today, I will show you something about sensors, uh, which are almost everywhere in our life. And uh, I will also point out the connection with diabetes, because uh, that might be interesting for you. Yeah. So in such an industrial world, yeah, we have to consider, really, that uh, systems controlling our environment, our self, uh, the technology are everywhere. Yeah? So there are many innovative aspects to improve the quality of living using sensor systems. But there are also a number of aspects reducing the quality and the culture of living. And I will also speak about that and I hope that the IT people will not crucify me. So what I will uh, tell you is a little bit about sensor technology because most of you might not be uh, aware of that or uh, might not be know a lot of this. Uh, then I will speak about uh, applications and I will uh, concentrate on sensor applications in healthcare because that might be interesting for most of you. And I will summarize the positive aspects. You will see there are many positive aspects. And I will also uh, raise some questions. So what are sensors? Sensors are devices uh, transforming non-electrical signals, information coming from biology, chemistry, physics, into electrical signals. Yeah? Thousands and thousands of them are around us, yeah? and they, we are really surrounded by these sensors everywhere. There are little devices embedded in many products yeah? uh, and very often overlooked. So what do they provide? They got recently uh, the possibility to communicate wireless, and therefore they transfer information about safety flexibility, mobility, they are in the, themselves, they are flexible, they are mobile, yeah? and, but on the other hand, they also can transfer information about our whereabouts, about our health situation, about our fitness conditions, so, and this information might be or is transferred to organizations and persons we do not know about. And this is a social challenge, I would say. Let's summarize a little bit sensor applications. Of course, everybody can think about industrial processes, control and management of processes. Energy management needs sensors. Automotive technology, I will give you a few examples. Consumer device control. Control of public places in some way an advantage, in some way a challenge. Uh, home and commercial building control and automatization. Food production. Of course, quality of food is something we really appreciate. Yeah? Uh, Health care control. And many, many more. What do they sense? On one side, they sense physical parameters. There is a long list, and this is com certainly not complete. Yeah, they also sense chemical parameters, and even if I am a chemist, I have to confess that most parameters sensed are physical ones. Yeah? And with the chemical parameters, we are already pretty poor in the sensing quality. And then we have to sense uh, determine biological uh, parameters, heartbeat, blood pressure, glucose, as we have just listened very carefully, yeah? oxygenation of blood, whatever. Yeah? And here we are still much more uh, on a research level than on an application level. And it is very complicated to sense these parameters. Now that picture gives you an overview of what the sensor is doing. The sensor gets an, a non 
electrical input signal. Somehow he transduces that into an electrical signal. And finally, we do some processing, some uh, analog digital converting, some amplification, and then you all know about the, the treatment of output signals. So that is not a big deal nowadays. Uh, these technical sensors, they get a non-electrical signal, transfer it into a resistance, a voltage, a current, for example, and then we do some processes with microprocessors and store the signal. The biological sensors, which we have inbuilt in all our biological systems, do something very similar. They have biological compounds as primary input signals. Uh, they produce signal molecules. They activate nerve cells. They generate electrical signals. And finally, this signal is processed in very specified nerve cells and in the brain, of course. Uh, here are some examples of te technical sensors. These are tiny, small uh, semiconductor sensors. The size is around 0 0.5 to 2 millimeters, and they sense magnetic fields, temperature, and light. And these are typically industrial, sturdy sensors, yeah? uh, designed to, to work over a long period of time in very harsh environment. The development trend is to replace electrical sensors like these ones here by optical sensors. I am not able to go into the details, but I'll give you some examples of optical sensors. This is an optical process sensor to measure the oxygen concentration or pH in beer or other liquids. So this is an important information Slovenia is a beer drinking country. You want the highest quality of beer and oxygen is an, uh, a com compound which really destroys the taste of beer. So no oxygen in beer is important for uh, many of us. Okay, what else? So the, the challenges of these sensors, they have to withstand uh, high chemical impacts. So cleaning in place, they are treated with sodium hydroxide, uh, HCl, and so on, and many nice chemicals, and uh, they have to survive. Uh, other kind of sensors you wear with yourself yeah, are radio frequency identification tabs. Uh, uh, they are passive sensors. They have to be activated from outside. They get some uh, energy in order to be, to, to be able to transfer a signal. But if they get some energy, then they are everywhere on each, on almost, on many items. Yeah? Uh, you use them to open the door. Yeah? You have them on the keys of your car. Yeah? They are very small. The heart of them, of these sensors is very, very small. They are omnipresent and I, uh, I guess that almost everybody of us here has such a sensor. No, then let's have a look to biological sensors. Yeah? How good are they compared with our technical sensors or how good are our technical sensors? You see one very, uh, very uh, high developed sensor system, the human eye. Yeah? It's uh, one of the best sensors we have. Huh? I will explain and make a comparison a little bit later. Huh? Go to biosensors. Nowadays, we are able and we improved very much the technology uh, sensing biological molecules. Nevertheless, we are, uh, there is a lot of work to be done. Huh? But you see, and you can see here, that biosensors combine the excellent selectivity of biology with the processing power of our microelectronics and optoelectronics. You know that biosensors under the name lab on a chip, one of the names for these biosensors. So they can sense hundreds of processes, hundreds of analytes on one microchip. Uh, still, it's not good enough and needs a lot of work to be done. Uh, an example of such a biosensor, because it's so interesting for the health uh, care situation. You have many analytes in a biological system. You have an 
recognition material on top of that sensor, which selectively recognizes only one type of analytes. This information is then transferred in the biology, in an almost biological system into a pH change, into a heat change, into a light change, yeah? or whatever, yeah? but this is the transfer of that signal into a detectable signal. And finally, we create with our uh, microelectronic devices an electrical signal out of that. Now let's compare the quality of biological sensors via technical sensors. Here on the left side, you see two technical sensors, and here one biological sensors, sensor of the eye. What about the resolution? In a good camera nowadays, you have 10 million pixels. The maximum is around, sorry, is around 80 million pixels in a camera chip. Yeah? If you create a temperature sensor, which is one of the most needed sensors worldwide, you have usually a resolution of one out of 1,000. That's enough for most of the applications. And in a biological system, you have 7 million cones, cone cells in your retina and 100 million rods to detect uh, the picture you get there. The signal transfer is in any case nowadays a digital signal transfer, at least after a first processing step. And although in the biological systems, if you look carefully into those, uh, they have a digital, a kind of a digital information transfer. The transfer is, uh, the, the word which is transferred is 16 bit wide, usually order in the sensors, usually 12 to 16 bit widths. And in the biological uh, system, we have 1 million nerve fibers uh, parallel uh, building up the, uh, the, uh, the, the visible nerve, sorry, the, our visible nerve. The transfer rate is really high, 1.5 gigabit per second in a camera inside from the, uh, from the chip to the microprocessor. In a classical microelectronic system or electronic system, you work with one million bit per second approximately like that. And if you calculate this for the human eye, yeah, you come to a number of 500 megabits per second. So there's a huge information transfer. Still, it is not good enough and not fast enough. Uh, in our, most of our processing systems or digital systems, we do not have any pre-processing. The eye needs a pre-processing in order to be able to transfer this huge amount of information towards the brain. Of course, sensors are of interest, not only to improve the quality of living, but also to improve the income. Huh? So look at the annual growth. Active sensor systems have a growth rate of a one, around 10% per year. Biosensor systems, at the moment, around 20% per year. And these passive sensor systems huh, uh, grow in a rate of 50% per year, approximately. So there is a lot of interest. Now let's have a look for, into the applications. Uh, food industry, of course, control of beer production. I have al already mentioned it because it's such an important nutrition for us. Yeah? Uh, chemical parameters like pH, conductivity, hygienic aspects, oxygen, enclosed food packages, for example, to control the freshness of food which comes on your shelf or into your kitchen. Then the environmental control. Huh? So we need to monitor a number of parameters continuously, but we are only able to monitor one parameter. Huh? So we are able to monitor dissolved oxygen. Huh? We should measure ionic strengths, we should measure the pH, but that is already in brackets because we can't do it. Hmm? Demands, we need to measure heavy metals. We should measure hazardous substances. 
We have to measure nitrate in the groundwater. We can do it. Then let's go to something you may be more familiar. In the car, we have a lambda sensor determining the oxygen concentration in the exhaust gas. The cars sense distances, pressure, temperature, whatever. So in a car, this is an assembly, or a car is an assembly of sensor systems. Give you an example for an environmental control system. In even in a re remote area, you can control the quality of water somehow. You would like to do it. You would like to transfer this data without connection towards a satellite system and get this data back in order to be aware of the conditions in our environment. Let's go to some health applications. So we need to have a chronic disease monitoring. Yeah? So an episodic monitoring, a continuous monitoring, and on. Uh, this is partially possible. We can here in a continuous monitoring monitor the classical parameters, but most is done in the laboratory, not online. Huh? Uh, a patient alarm monitoring, that is possible. The wellness monitoring is also something we would need, and especially disabled patients, uh, persons would need that. And you can monitor the fitness. Huh? So uh, it would be possible it is partially possible. And I will show you later on the positive and the negative sides of that. So for the medical applications or medical research, this is a sensor tip on a glass fiber with a diameter of 0.2 millimeters. This can be inserted into almost every organ without really destroying the organ. This such a small device is not a problem. And you see it here applied to the heart of a pig, and this is the answer of this organ if you change the oxygen, uh, the oxygen concentration in the blood. That blue one is the oxygen concentration, the black one is the CO2 concentration, so you see if you reduce the oxygen uh, in the blood, in that organ, then the CO2 production increases rapidly. Uh, don't crucify me again. The outcome of this research was an extra corporal oxygenation machine, which is so small that you can now use it for very little, very tiny children with a weight below 20 kilogram, which was almost not possible five years ago. Health applications, there are many of them, but nothing really works satisfying. Huh? There are products available. Many are under development. Uh, we do not need stationary instruments in order to keep our style of life. Huh? So what is needed desperately is a glucose sensor which you can carry with you and which should not be invasive. So you should not have to stick into your skin all the time. Pulse oximeters, okay, electrocardiographs, they all uh, are available but not wireless. So there is an urgent need of wireless sensor devices communicating with a service unit. This will allow safe, healthy, and independent living conditions for disabled or elderly persons. How is the situation, or how could it be? Yeah, here you see a control situation, many smoke detectors, blood pressure, meet weight meters, and on, and this information should be transferred to a central monitoring station, and this central monitoring station should some, somehow activate uh, a mobile uh, staff which would take care of this person needing help. So I would like to summarize these positive aspects. Yeah? In the health-related sensing systems, we experience at the moment, and it is, uh, it is increasing in speed, a change in medical treatment strategies. It is reshaped uh, and will reshape the health care. Now we have always in post-incidence actions. Yeah? Uh, we react to an, a problem. 
In the future, uh, we should have a pre-incident treatment, a proactive health care instead of reacting if a problem has, also, uh, has already developed. For that, we need a continuous monitoring of, of uh, those people who might create these problems. In addition, we need that continuous monitoring to reduce the hospitalization days and reduce in this way the healthcare cost. We have to develop a point of care medicine. This is based on sensors available at the patient's home, not in the hospital. Therefore, wireless sensors for better healthcare and patient monitoring to provide healthy and independent living conditions. These are somehow a little bit around the corner. In the case of the food control related systems, we have a positive aspect, a better and constant quality of the food, a reduced risk of, of uh, poisonous components uh, and non-food components that could be cleaning chemicals broken glass and on. But recently in Austria, two years ago, seven people died from, uh, 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 and let's say, some, uh, some uh, pathogens in cheese. So still this, uh, this dangerous situation, or this can happen. A better quality, a better control of the quality would be good. So reduce the risk of deteriorated food. In the environmental monitoring, we could get a better quality of life in forcing us and the industry to take care, to be more careful. Uh, we can control the release of harmful substances. We could develop early warning systems. And in technological process monitoring, that is a clear a reduction of non-quality products, an increased quality of the products, a reduction of costs, an improved sustainability. That's something we should not forget. We can improve the sustainability, reduce the amount of material we need to produce something. Uh, for example, in the food industry, 50% of the food produced is going to the waste. 25%, half of that, is done by me and all of you we throw away 25% of the food we buy, and 25% of the total food produced is going to the waste from the producer to the packaging and production line. So 50% of the food, primary produced food, is waste. Now, yes, I, I started a little bit later, yeah? but we sh should not go to lunch because of the lecture before mine, yeah? so we have enough time. Questionable aspects. How is the situation in the past and now? Uh, we have devices which are in contact with the human users. And we send a demand for information to that device and we get back some uh, answers from that device, whatever that is. Yeah? And if we have more devices in operation, we get uh, more answers, but they all need some kind of, of uh, triggering that they send us some information back. In the nowadays, and especially in the future, huh, the situation will change dramatically. Huh? Uh, not only we will communicate with these devices, uh, the devices will send us back much more information than we might need and then we want. And the devices will start to communicate between each other. So, and this communication of the devices is controlled by the manufacturer. We do not know how they communicate. We do not know what they do exchange. And we do not know what they are doing to whom they are sending information and when they are sending information. And this is a very questionable aspect. Huh? There already exists or are under rapid development networks 
of connected objects, vehicles, machine compon components, you know them under the nice word intelligent machines. Domestic uh, instruments, durable instruments, you know it as a smart home. The clothes we wear, smart clothes. All items are hooked up via these identification tracking technologies, wireless sensors, actuators, RFID tags. They are hooked up to a network which works at a speed most of us do not realize at the very moment. This network of connected objectives is the Internet of Things. It's not the Internet of Humans, it's the Internet of Things. Huh? This expression was first uh, mentioned by Kevin Ashton already some time ago. But let me show you now how this develops. These are not my words. Uh, the executive director or editor of the magazine, uh, Wired Magazine, said, before 2030, everything will become connected and the web will be the environment. A pair of sneakers will not be some kind of shoes, it will become a chip with heels. A car will become an assembly of sensors and a chip on wheels. Some years later, he said, in 5,000 days since the start of the internet, less time than it takes for a child to progress through our school system, the world has been transformed. Online social networking through applications like MySpace and Facebook are changing the nature of social interactions. This morning, they uh, uh, let us know that 900 million persons are using Facebook on this world. So already 20% of the human beings use Facebook. Sorry. So the, the speed in which the web transforms the industrial world does not slow down at the moment. Every item, every artifact will become a part of the web. CISCO predicts that 500 billion connected active and passive sensors will be available on 2020. The IoT, Internet of Things, and the number of devices connected to the Internet will exceed in 2015, the numbers of people on this world. If you don't believe that, I have some other comments. 5,000 days ago, we can all remember this time, nobody producing newspapers would consider that the computer would shake the power of the printing press. No record company believed that their uh, revenue would increase. Who could imagine that he could carry or she could carry a library in her briefcase? Who could imagine that all your movements would be tracked? It is evident that this low-cost technology of sensors and RFID systems uh, can use to track almost any physical artifact. They are already tracking the animals. Uh, they might track me and you tomorrow. We have already the interconnection of many things. Yeah? Uh, we have these RFID wallets in our, or RFID tags in our uh, wallets. What will go on? The consumables will tell us what has to be done. Your refrigerator will tell you what you have to cook in the evening yeah? because this is available in your household. The vacuum cleaner will let you know when you have to change the filters and he will send you an information every minute or every hour. Your flowers will send you an SMS to the office 
that they have to be watered. Nowadays, I can let die my flowers if I want, but in 10 years, you will not be able. Yeah? We will lose our personal responsibility. There are two major trends, you see the authors. Yeah? There is a shift of the perception of private protection, uh, which is increasingly considered as a responsibility of the individual instead of a responsibility of the state and the authority. And it appears that the current IT research is bargaining yeah, with these very valuable items we have. There is a need of public awareness and discussion and an input of other related disciplines to the IT research. Let me finally close with a joke which I got from the web. The consumer yells, where are my damned keys? And your keys will answer, on top of the refrigerator, you idiot. <laughs> thank you for the attention and thanks the organizers for this very interesting conference. Thank you very much.